Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yakuza on the Tour YouTube channel. And it is a preparation day for Shabbat. Yay! And for those who are keeping the appointed time of Sukkot, uh, the day after Shabbat is the first day of Sukkot, which is also a high Shabbat as well. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, are in your tents and hopefully you guys are getting ready to have your temporary dwellings and that you guys are keeping the appointed times of our Creator, which is very, very important. Because this is how we ended up in the situation that we are in right now, where every single one of us are in captivity. And many people are arguing about it. And I had an uh, individual that posted yesterday, and they said from Acts, there is no Jew and there is no Gentile in Messiah Yahushua. And that is very true. Because number one, you should absolutely not be a Gentile. A Gentile means that you are out of covenant with our Creator. It means that you do not keep the laws, statutes, and commandments that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and you absolutely would not want to be a Jew. A Jew is of the fourth son of the, um, the patriarch uh, Jacob, and it is uh, it does not represent the 12 tribes of Israel. It represents one tribe, which is Ju Yehuda, Judah. And so you would not want to be a Gentile. You would not want to be a Jew. You would want to be, if anything, if you need a label for it, you would want to be called a Hebrew, uh, which means crossing over, crossed over one. Now, um, before we get into too much of this, let's show you exactly what we're talking about right here. This is the kingdom of Judah. This is the kingdom of Israel prior to the split. Um, well, prior to everybody going into captivity, this is what it looked like over there. Now, we are going to be reading out of Yah's scriptures today, and before I go into that, I want to take you guys into a very limited number of restored names. Scriptures are going to be available in roughly five months, five months or so. We are taking pre-orders for them right now, and all of these, these this actual uh, reading um, has 103 books. 100% restored names. You will never find another scriptures anywhere, anywhere like this at all. And so when you are looking for a, a complete scriptures, this is it. And so you have 103 books, you have the entire Apocrypha, and you have, it's $59. And it is large print. Large print for me is very, very important because I am getting old. I can't see very well. And so all of these little tiny Bibles that I see, the, the double column that are just super, super small, you can't see. The scriptures of Yah, Yah scriptures, it will be a double column. It will be 14.5 font, which means hopefully all of us can see it. And um, it will be a tremendous scripture. So you, if you guys want to get these, the I will leave a link in the description below. Again, there are limited number of them on our first print run. And um, for those who know, we are the, the family that has spent nearly a year putting together all of these scriptures, getting them in order, proofreading them, editing them, and making a as far close to perfect translation as we can. And the thing about Yah's scriptures is it is not like any other scriptures out there. Because not only is Yahuwah restored, Yahushua is restored, our, our Messiah, but all of the other patriarchs that we have, all of their names have been restored. And it, it also has um, the testament inside of the, this apocrypha it has a testament of the 12, which are all of Jacob's sons. And all of those have also been restored. So let us get rolling. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Good, good. Everyone good? Yeah. You guys ready for a double holiday? I guess so. Double uh, double day. And so today at the end of uh, at sunset, um, that is the end of the week. So we are supposed to cook what we're going to cook today, prepare what we're going to prepare today, and it is the end. And so at sunset today, the new day begins. And you can find that in Genesis because Genesis 1, it talks about the evening and morning or the very first day. It repeats that over and over and over. The order of things is very important because it is clearly evening. Uh, evening is when the day be uh, evening basically begins and, and ends at sunset. All right. So <clears throat> for those who believe or do not believe that you guys are in um, captivity right now, um, well, the, the, here, here's something that we should probably talk about. First of all, I'm going to go into Hebrews 8 real quick, which is um, something that hopefully will put a nail in all of these readings that we are doing. 
And I am going to start roughly on verse six. And when it's talking about a mediator, who's our mediator, gentlemen? Yahushua. Yahushua, Jesus the Christ. That and his Hebrew name is Yahushua, Yeshua. Um, so we're going to start with verse six and we're going to see if we can get this to all line up. Verse six is this. But now he has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. For if that first had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. All right. What are we talking about? Did he just say that the Torah was faulty? It says right here, for if the first had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. What is, what is, what is Paul or the writers of Hebrews saying right here? Well, uh, he's talking about how the sacrifice is how we, the freedom of sins. Yeah, and so he is not saying that the Torah was faulted. It's saying that the people who were supposed to be observing the Torah and keeping the Torah, who are all of us, even to today, we have messed it up. We did not do that. And as we are looking about the 10 tribes of the Northern Kingdom that have been lost, these folks did not keep the Torah. And we will read about that now in just a second. Now, this is the part, this is the meat and potatoes that we all need to understand is there is no house of Gentile. When I said yesterday that Gentiles are not saved, Gentiles aren't saved. There is no house of Gentile. There is no Jew and there is no Gentile in Messiah Yahushua. There is an Ebri. There is a, there is a people who are willing to be obedient to our creator in every way, shape, and form. And if you are not in covenant with our creator in, Gen in, in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, then you don't have a house. For this, what we're about to read right here, the covenant that everybody's looking for, it's only for a set of people. This, the only qualifications that we know of in scriptures that this set of people are, are the people that are obedient to our creator. Verse eight, for finding fault with them, he says, see, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I shall conclude with the house of Yisrael and with the house of Yahuda, a renewed covenant. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzram because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says Yahuwah. Because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Yisrael after those days, says Yahuwah. Giving my, what? Laws in their mind and I shall write them on their hearts and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall by no means teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying, no Yahuwah, because they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Now, verse 11 is future tense, because if you would go on a city bus and you ask anybody who's Yahuwah, they go, what? What are you saying? If you ask anyone in the church who's Yahuwah, majority of them would have no idea. When you talk to anybody and you go, hey, do you guys love the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator? What's your favorite commandment? They'll go, oh, those commandments are dead, right? So again, I want to bring this up and talk to everybody and try to peg this in. Guys, the covenant that is made in the day we are in today, says our creator, is that, Yah, that he will give his laws in their mind, and we will write them on their hearts. That is, the, that is the conditions of this covenant. There's nothing else to this covenant other than if you want to be a person of Yah, then you need to obey the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, heading over to Hosea 10, because this is the, the prophecy of the future. This is basically our forefathers and foremothers that are going into captivity, that are being judged, that are being basically um, our creator is divorcing them. And so what we're hearing here is we're hearing the prophecies of where we are at today because the 10 tribes of Yisrael, the prophecy is that in the end days, the scattered sheep will all be returned. We will all fall under the same banner of Messiah Yahushua, Jesus the Christ, our King, 
will ride with us and he will get us out on the second exodus when the time comes. Is it this lifetime? I don't know. Is it next next generations? I do not know. But we need to be ready. Being ready means that we are not smelling like the world, tasting like the world, looking like the world, or doing anything like the world. We need to be in covenant with our creator as this law, statutes, and commandments. We need to pray, and we need to make sure that we are very, very close to our Elohim because there is only one way to the kingdom. That's through Messiah Yahushua and the Torah. And that says that in Revelation 14, 12. Okay, chapter 10. Yisrael is a degenerate vine. He brings forth fruit for himself. As his fruit increased, he increased the altars. And the better his land, the better they made the pillars. So right out of the gate, you can kind of see the contention that we have right here, right? The contention that our creator, Yahuwah Elohim, Most High, has against the people of Yisrael. These were our foremothers and forefathers that came, that went into captivity around 700 uh, B.C., and he was, this is where all of these, this is, he's talking to them. He's giving them a final rights. If you are on death row, the day before you're going to get your final meal, you're going to get all of this stuff. It's the final meal for the house of Yisrael right here. Verse two, their heart has been slippery. Now they are guilty. He breaks down their altars. He destroys their pillars. For now they say, we have no sovereign because we did not revere Yahuwah. What would the sovereign do for us? They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Therefore, judgment shall spring up like poisonous weeds in the furrows of the field. The inhabitants of Shomeron fear because of the calf of Bet Awen, for its people shall mourn for it, as well as its priests, who used to rejoice over it because of its esteem that has departed from it. It is also brought to Ashur as a present for sovereign Yarab. Ephraim receives shame, and Yisrael is put to shame through his counsel. Shomeron is cut off. Her sovereign is like a twig on the surface of the water. And the high places of Awen, the sin of Yisrael shall be destroyed. Thorn and thistles come up on their altars. And they shall say to the mountains, cover us. And the hills, fall on us. O oh, Yisrael, you have sinned from the days of Gibah. There they stood. The battle in Gibah against the children of perversity did not overtake them. When I desire... When I bind them, and people shall be gathered against them when I bind them for their double guilt. And Ephraim is a trained heifer, loving to thresh grain, but I myself shall pass over her comely neck. I put Ephraim to the yoke. Yahuda plows, Jacob harrows for him. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap according to kindness, break up your tillable ground. It is time to seek Yahuwah till he comes and rains righteousness on you, okay? Guys, this was thousands of years ago, but this exact same message is for us today, right? It is time to seek Yahuwah. How do we seek Yahuwah? Do we seek Yahuwah in the movie theaters? Do we seek, uh, uh, do we seek him in partying on the outside? Do we seek him in watching UFC fights? Are we seeking him where there's great evil? Where are we seeking our creator, right? Where we put our time is where our creator, where, well, well, that's where we, our heart is. Where we put our time is where we put our heart, but that's not necessarily where we, our creator is. So we need to seek our creator. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped unrighteousness. You have eaten the fruit of lying because you trusted in your own way, in your many mighty men. An uproar shall arise among your people, and all your strongholds shall be ravaged as Shulman, ravaged Beth Arbel in the day of battle. A mother dashed in pieces on her children. Thus it shall be done to you, O Bethel, because of the evil of your wickedness. At dawn, the sovereign of Yisrael is completely cut off. Okay, so there we have it, folks. Um, this is... Basically, it was prophecy, right? None of these, none, Yisrael was still a, a country, right? It was still a nation. It was still running. It was still doing day-to-day -day stuff. They had no idea they were just about to go into captivity. But yet our creator was kind enough to show everybody prior to what he does, what he wishes for us. And this same message is for all of us today. If we are willing to turn back from Hasatan and turn our way into Yahuwah to seek his covenants, to seek his laws, 
and you will not understand and you will not seek his laws if you are not reading scriptures. It's not difficult. It's not hard. It's not a mystery. There's no matrixy code to it that you have to figure it out. It's there. It's very, very clear. Don't drink the blood. Don't look at your kids naked. Don't um, keep, keep the Shabbat days. Keep the appointed times as we're going into, right? Simple, simple things. But yet people don't want a leader. People don't want anybody except this once saved, always saved satanic doctrine that is very much a satanic doctrine because Matthew 7 very clearly says that people who believed that they were saved are told to depart from our Messiah because they are Torah-less. They are law-less. And the law is only found in the first five books of scriptures. So guys, with that, we hope that you have a wonderful preparation day. We hope that you have a fantastic Sukkot. Uh, whenever it is you guys are keeping it, um, again, and we had a brother that was talking to us last night. He was keeping his first day of Tabernacles yesterday. So everybody and their dog has a different calendar and we're not going to get these calendars exact until our Messiah rides with us. We're not going to get exactly what we need to do until we have our Melchizedek priest who is on his way. He's already, he's already in his, his, his bus. It's, it's already rocking and rolling. He just has to be dispatched by pops, by dad, by Yahuwah. So when that happens, um, don't be one of those virgins who has no oil in their lanterns that is looking and rushing when it is uh, time. Because our creator and his son said no man knows when the time is and um, it could be any moment. It could be in a twinkling of an eye. So with that, guys, we love you guys. We hope that you have a wonderful day and we're out. All right, shalom. shalom.